21 minutes past eight here on LBC. Um, you are a Scottish MP. What is your attitude to Scottish independence? I want Scotland to stay in the United Kingdom, along with most of my constituents and most of the people in Scotland. However, the SNP were elected in the last Scottish parliamentary election um, on a mandate of having another referendum. Were you Prime Minister, would you allow that referendum? Well, no, they don't have a mandate. Well, they do have a mandate. No, they don't. They didn't win a majority of MSPs. No, it, it, they it, lost it was MSPs. in their manifesto and they're now in government. They're now in government as a minority government. Only just. But they're but, a minority. But they, have they, more, they, they have more of a, they have more, have more of a mandate than your party does in Scotland. And they did stand on the issue of having a second referendum. And they lost MSPs. And they also, in 2017, set out plans for Indyref 2. And a few weeks later, we had a general election and they lost 21 MPs yeah, on the, the back of an election campaign that was largely fought on that issue. So to suggest that there's some kind of clamour in Scotland to have Indyref 2, I mean, it's entirely the opposite. Well, you say that, but you look at some of the opinion polls in recent weeks and they do show a, a small minority for independence. So that, there does seem to be a little bit of a shift. Well, I mean... It, it, w <laughs> I think from people, speaking to people in Scotland, from looking at the way in which uh, the SNP, when they talk about independence, have actually lost seats in the Scottish Parliament and in the UK Parliament. What people in Scotland want is they want Scotland in the UK, the UK in the EU, and to move on from this constitutional wrangling that we've now had for, you know best part of seven years in Scotland and have a government that focuses on making their lives better. Now, it's only the Liberal Democrats that are arguing for that position because, you know, all of the other parties are either saying we should come out the UK, we should come out the EU, we should have this endless constitutional wrangling. It's the Lib Dems that are standing up for what people in Scotland actually want. So, but you've lost lots of seats in Scotland as well, haven't you? I mean, well, there we, were 11 we, Liberal Democrat MPs we, in Scotland. How many are there I'll, now? I'll, Two? I'll, four. four? I'll, okay. I'll grant you we did have a pretty difficult election night in 2015 in Scotland and across the rest of the UK, but we did go from one to four MPs in 2017. In the European elections just gone, we got an MEP elected again. So, actually, the Liberal Democrats in Scotland are on the up, and I think yes, that but is... but you have four MPs in Scotland, and the Scottish National Party, I think I'm right in saying, have 35. Yeah. Now, that should tell us something, shouldn't it, in terms of mandate? Well, as I say, they lost 21 MPs it matter. standing they, on a platform they, they, they of have, Indyref 2. They, they didn't still get, have they lost nine 15 times of the vote. more than you do. Yeah, but pe I mean, people... So they have in more Scotland... of a mandate for their position than you do for yours. I mean, that, that's the logic we're, that you're we're, using. We're obviously not the only party in Scotland that's standing on this position. So what you saw in the 2017 election was voters recognising that in different parts of the country they might have to vote in a different way to make sure that their view on wanting to keep Scotland in the UK would be respected. And that's why, yes, you saw the Lib Dems win seats, but you also saw the Conservatives and the Labour Party uh, in Scotland win seats. How come you wish to deny the people of Scotland a second referendum and yet you're so passionate about having a sef second referendum on Brexit? It's because you don't agree with the result of the first one. You don't agree with the... But you do agree with the result of the first one in Scotland. Scotland. So that that's hypocritical, isn't no. it? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to apologise for standing up for the things that I believe in and for what most people in Scotland want, which is to keep our place in the UK and in the European Union. Clearly, the inconsistency is the SNP, who on the one hand say, well, they would like us to be in the EU, but for some reason working with our closest partners in the UK family of nations is not something they want. Or the Conservatives, who will say rightly that the United Kingdom is important and you know we are greater than the sum of our parts but when it comes to working in that kind of way in a, in a union with other EU countries suddenly well, they, they don't different. want to that's know. That's different because the EU supposedly isn't a political union it's an economic union so I'm not sure the two really work as a comparison. Well I, I think the I think the EU does achieve um, uh, political ends also not least actually no, the, the, the end of peace leave. in in Europe you know for, for decades um, so so I think I think that that's where the the inconsistency is is with those parties and uh, you know and I, I the other thing is is that we had in Scotland in 2014 a really detailed blueprint for uh, independence set out to their credit by the Scottish government they 
650 pages of a, a white paper was produced and that was comprehensively rejected by people in Scotland. That is very different to what happened in 2016 where there was no detailed planning laid out by the Leave campaigners where actually even now they still can't agree on what Brexit should look like. So when we have uh, that Brexit deal, that really does need to go to the people for a final say.